Okay. Because we're really far away. <laughs> <laughs> Are we getting married or not? I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> guys, you have my Nervous. <laughs> Across the room. <laughs> Oh, we're, I see. Let's center ourselves. The bride and groom encourage that you engage in tasteful use of your cell phone today. Please, please be considerate of those trying to enjoy the ceremony, as well as my official debut as an officiant. Thank you. All right, here we go. You guys ready? Let's fire it up. Welcome, beloved family and friends, to the marriage ceremony of Felicia Maiello and Drew Dorian. For those of you who do not know me, I am the Reverend Michael Bronia. About three years ago, I asked my dear friend Drew to officiate my wedding. Well, to the surprise of absolutely no one, he did an amazing job. And in no way do I feel like this is payback for that inquisition. <laughs> Truthfully, marrying two of my dearest friends in the world is one of the greatest honors of my life. Can, can someone do that? Yep. Okay, sorry. No problem. Okay. This, is, this, this is your show. Not you, okay. not you. Mm -hmm. Marrying two of my dearest friends in the world is one of the greatest honors of my life. Thank you both. The beautiful couple and I would like to express our sincerest gratitude to everyone in attendance today, many of whom travel at length to be here and bear witness to this most joyous and monumental occasion. I would like to extend a special thank you to Drew and Felicia's parents for your lasting support and unwavering love. You guys raised two beautiful and loving people, and without you, this moment would not be possible. Gotta get cold. Yeah. That's right. Get, yeah, this is, you know. get loose. Today is a celebration, a celebration about love, commitment, family, and friendship. If you are here today, it is because Felicia and Drew are grateful you're in their lives and want nothing more than to share in this moment of promise and eternal love with you. Felicia and Drew are able to stand by each other here today to take in the limitless wealth that you all have given them in spirit, in time, and in love, and to return it, not just to themselves, not just to you, but to the memory of those past. At this time, Felicia and Drew have asked me to acknowledge their loved ones who could not be present to share in their joy but are here with us in mind and spirit. Rosemary and Thomas Kenny, you hold a, a dear place in Felicia's heart, and we're an integral part in helping her become the strong and compassionate woman she is today. Joseph and Rose Sinnoh, who passed down to Drew their passion and love for the New York Yankees. <laughs> Thank God it wasn't the Mets. <laughs> and taught him how to make the best pot of sauce on the East Coast. Felicia, I must admit, what has always struck me most about you is not your generosity, your heart, or your exquisite golden blonde hair. It's your compassion for those you care for. You always put the needs of others ahead of your own. Whether it's advice, a shoulder to cry on, or a simple hug, Felicia is one of the most reliable and considerate people I've ever had the pleasure of knowing. You cannot appropriately describe Felicia without mentioning her resilience. Inside of a year, she has overcome a major surgery, diagnosis for endometriosis, while also, I might add, being an advocate for all women who are faced with the same affliction. And what else can we throw on top of that? How about planning a wedding in a freaking pandemic? <laughs> planning a wedding is stressful and difficult enough. I can't imagine the hardships, additional hardships, the two of you face throughout this entire COVID mess. And by the two of you, I mean mostly Felicia. <laughs> now, we all get to make memories that will last a lifetime, enjoy delicious food and drink, and pillage the dance floor because of your diligence and will to not let any obstacle hold you down. Felicia, you're a rock star. You bring out the best in Drew, and I can stand here and proclaim unequivocally that you are his person. Drew. I've had the pleasure of knowing you for about 20 years and have had countless laughs because of it. You are gregarious and funny as hell while somehow being a curmudgeon at the same time. I knew, I knew that was coming. You're articulate, an extremely talented writer, and can rap two chains in Drake verses with precision. You're one of the best dudes ever just to sit around, chop it up, and have a few brews with. Whether playing an average third base at the Meadowlands, accidentally sending our group chat the most provocative nude self-portrait, <laughs> or spewing a hilarious impression of Vice Mike Francesa. You wanna, you wanna hit him with it real quick? I'll pass. Okay, okay. I'll pass, I'll pass. You have an unbelievable knack for making people smile. I've always thought of you as more of a little brother than a friend, 
and I'm very proud of the man and husband you have become today. I love you both. Now to how the story of Drew and Felicia began. Now, many of you may not know this, but the bride and groom met at my birthday celebration in Asbury Park. Yeah. In the middle of a crowded dance floor at Johnny Max, I had the fortune of witnessing these two lock eyes passionately for the first time <laughs> and turn up the heat on that warm summer evening. A night of conversation, flirting, and dancing quickly ensued. Felicia, effortlessly floating about the dance floor like an elegant butterfly. <laughs> Drew, stomping his feet like a madman as if there was some type of infestation at Johnny Max. That weekend, their, their romance was just beginning. A week later, Drew officially began courting Felicia and set up quite the first date. Now, most guys might choose to begin things a bit more casually. A movie, dinner, maybe even like a cup of coffee. Not my boy Drew here. He set up an aggressive bar crawl throughout the city of Hoboken, New Jersey, which resulted in Drew's phone being destroyed, Felicia returning home barefoot, and an Uber rating that has still not recovered. I always found this to be ironic, seeing how Drew spent the majority of his 20s avoiding Hoboken at all costs. Hey Drew, what are you doing tonight? You wanna to grab a drink in Hoboken? Ha! No chop, bro. This in itself is a testament to the influence that Felicia has had on Drew. What this date also resulted in was two of my good friends finding comfort, joy, and strength in each other's embrace. Fast forward to today. The both of you stand here ready to solidify your bond while understanding you will love each other deeply and unconditionally for the rest of your lives. Because I am the officiant, I get to give everyone here my two cents on marriage. So. <laughs> Here it goes. Marriage has been an everlasting feature across nearly every culture, religion, generation, and society. We have thousands of important moments in our lives, but this one is regarded as so critical that we share it with those who matter most. So why this moment? Because despite our differences, love is what we all share. It is the great unifier, our one universal truth. No matter who we are, where we come from, or what we believe, we know this one thing. Love is what we're doing right. We all have loved in our lifetimes, and in this moment, we are reminded that the ability to love and to be loved is the purest part of our humanity. Deep, right? <laughs> now my advice. Here we go, guys. Become one soul, a we with two minds that don't always have to think alike, but in all ways and in everything are together. Listen Listen and hear each other. Should a quarrel break out, interrupt it with a smooch. Never feel as if you're too old to be holding hands. Be able to give in. Be able to forgive. Give your heart and cherish the lighthearted moments. Dance in the kitchen. Pinch each other's butt in a crowded restaurant. You ever seen him dance? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Laugh at Drew's flatulence. <laughs> Appreciate your differences and indeed be strengthened by them. Journey across the landscape of life with tenderness, kindness, and caring for one another. I know you will be there for each other in sickness and in health, for richer or poorer, but hopefully richer, you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay, now we're going to move on to the vows and promises. If I can, if you guys can distribute, John, thank you so much. Okay. We're going to do some promises first. Felicia, hang on a second. Don't, don't jump ahead. I'll, yeah. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll help you out. Now I'm going to ask, and you guys are staring at each other intently, and you're going to remember this moment in time. Felicia, yeah. do you promise to allow Drew, do you promise to love and allow Drew a small weekly time slot to play video games? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Drew, do you promise to support Felicia and watch rerun after rerun of the sitcom Friends with her until you sound like Joey Tribbiani in everyday life? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Felicia, do you promise to scour the internet as well as most department stores in order to find a pair of gloves suitable to fit Drew's large hands? Unfortunately, yes. And Drew, do you promise to create new and exciting ways to cook potatoes for Felicia to enjoy? Yes. Yes, Excellent. sir. Excellent. May the vows that you make today be the first step as you dance the dance of lovers as husband and wife. With, the, 
with these words, things will never quite be the same between the two of you. As you proclaim to the world, this is my husband and this is my wife. And may I remind you that what you promise today must be renewed tomorrow and every day forward. So now, Felicia, you may begin your vow. I'm so nervous. Okay. Um, I guess I'll, I don't know. All right. Drew, our love story began one day after the passing of my grandmother. For some, this may seem strange, but to me, it made perfect sense. She was everything to me, and she also happened to be obsessed with me finding a husband. I truly believe that I was destined to meet you and that she handpicked you for me. Since the moment I met you, there was a strong force that made me want to be near you. I was immediately drawn to you. I didn't know exactly what it was, but as time went on, I realized not only did I want to be around you, but I didn't ever want to live without you. When I started to think about the things I love most about you, I realized just how long that list was. Almost as long as my list of your annoying traits. <laughs> just kidding, not really. You are caring and thoughtful and incredibly supportive. You are the most genuine and fiercely loyal man I have ever met. You are a true gentleman through and through. I absolutely love your never ending strange but hilarious sense of humor. I even secretly like your dad jokes. <laughs> Now with all this good, I do have to accept that you will drop and break 90% of what we own with, with your huge hands and also continuously put my life in danger every single time you drive. <clears throat> you have made me and continue to make me a more loving person. Thank you for loving me as I am unconditionally and for always making me feel like I'm the only woman in the room, unless Beyonce is on TV, of course. <clears throat> This past year and a half has surely shown us both that things aren't always going to be easy and that marriage won't always be easy. It's taught us that things rarely go as planned. We have already gone through sickness and health, good and bad, ups and downs. We had a hell of a year, but we navigated through all of it together as a team. Life is full of uncertainties, but one thing I'm certain of is that we are better together. Even though we first said I do more than a year and a half ago, and it meant something, it wasn't the same as today. I stand here today in front of all of our family and friends, incredibly confident and so proud to be your wife and to be able to call you my husband. I promise to always support your love of the Yankees. I can't say the same about the Giants if they don't shape up. <laughs> I promise to always make time to watch new seasons of Married at First Sight. Yes, guys, he likes reality TV. <clears throat> I promise to always love you, support you, challenge you, appreciate you, respect you, pick you up when you're down, Celebrate in your successes, and last but not least, I promise to, of course, always continue to ask you if the chicken is cooked enough. <laughs> you are my best friend, and there is no life I want without you in it. I can't wait to see what the future holds for us, and the amazing father you will be one day. From the bottom of my heart, I can honestly say that I've never loved you more. Whatever may come, your heart I will choose. Forever I'm yours, forever I do. That was beautiful, Felicia. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Better come with it, Drew. Felicia, you are truly the most remarkable person I have ever met. You look absolutely stunning, and I cannot believe I'm lucky enough to, to be standing up here with you. <laughs> Looking at you today, it's hard to imagine how I got this lucky. I'm reminded of this now and again, like for instance, when a buddy from work once saw a photo of you on my phone and proceeded to tell me, damn bro, it's a good thing you have good health insurance. <laughs> the, har the hard work you have put in to make this day possible, all while starting a new career, finding this new apartment is nothing short of incredible. The fact that you have found a way to balance work and handle the responsibilities of our personal lives, all while simultaneously battling the wicked disease endometriosis, as well as my seemingly endless goal to annoy you as much as humanly possible <laughs> has been fascinating to watch. You inspire me each and every day. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for oh so many things. Thank you for your unlimited supply of patience. Thank you for being the person I rely on the most. Thank you for never ever letting me down. <laughs> thank you for being the best friend I've ever had. You didn't think it was going to happen. Nah. <laughs> Thank you for making me a better man. Thank you for displaying a level of selflessness and thoughtfulness I did not know existed before I met you. Everyone who has been fortunate enough to call you friend or family has been no stranger to these outstanding traits 
and as your husband, I am fortunate to be the most frequent beneficiary. In fact, it is what drew me to you in the first place. Well, that and the fact that on that magical night in Asbury, you looked unbelievable in that romper and talked smack to me about how weird I was acting. I knew from that moment I had finally met my match. I know it is impossible to meet your level of giving and generosity, but I promise to always try my hardest. I promise to you my loyalty, my respect, and my unconditional love. I promise to be your protector both physically and emotionally. I promise to always treat you with the utmost respect. I promise to never ever serve you a piece of uncooked chicken. <laughs> I promise to curb my frustration when you ask me to put an already absolutely murdered piece of chicken back in the oven to cook longer. <laughs> I promise to keep as many potatoes in the house as our kitchen can hold. Oh, I'm really predictable. I, promi I promise to always try and make you laugh, even when you aren't in the mood. I promise our lives will never be dull and will always be full of love, joy, and laughter. It is no doubt that the most fulfilling and meaningful steps in my life have been taken with you by my side, and I look forward to continuing that trend as long as we both have breath left in our lungs. You have made me a better man in more ways than I can count. I love you with every ounce of my soul and every fiber of my being. I cannot wait to continue to embark on this journey of life with the best partner in the world by my side. Wow, excellent guys. Very well said. Not, not a dry in the house, I'm sure. All right, now we have come to the exchange of the rings. And we have Michael Quist. Please distribute the rings. Rings are a symbol of promise and intent. Place the rings on one another for intent realized and a promise fulfilled. It is an outward reminder of your inner unity. So please, Felicia, repeat after me. I, Felicia. I, Felicia. Give you, Drew, this ring. Give you, Drew, this ring. As an eternal symbol of my love and commitment to you. As an eternal symbol, what? <laughs> As of my love and commitment to you. Of my love and commitment to you. Okay, Drew. You can do it. Drew's hands strike again. <laughs> I, Drew. I, Drew. Give you, Felicia, this ring. Give you, Felicia, this ring. As an eternal symbol of my love and commitment to you. As an eternal symbol of my love and commitment to you. Do that now, Drew. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, by the authority given to me by Drew and Felicia, I now pronounce you married. Drew, put those, put those lips to work. Life couldn't get much better. Today is going to be the best day ever. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. and Mrs. Dorian. Boom.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the beautiful Mineral Springs Resort. My name is Nick. Enjoy my Sergio. We are here with Pulse Entertainment New Jersey, and we are absolutely thrilled to be here to celebrate this wonderful moment in the newlyweds' lives together. Before we get things started, ladies and gentlemen, we have to do some really important introductions. So I'm going to ask everybody to direct their attention to the area at the center of the dance floor as we welcome in our wedding party. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to make as much noise as possible for everyone that comes in this evening, but of course, save the best for last for our newlyweds. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the center of the dance floor as we welcome in our wedding party. And ladies and gentlemen, we are going to start things off by welcoming in our parents of both the bride and groom. So ladies and gentlemen, please put together your hands for Celeste and Tony, the parents of the bride. Come on. That's right, you can make some noise, it's okay. Coming up right behind them, we have the parents of the groom. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Michelle and Gary. Come on. All right. Now, for this next group, ladies and gentlemen, think of it like a college football team coming onto the stage. Make some noise for all of the bridesmaids and groomsmen coming in together. Let's go. Here they come. Come on. Make a nice big line, guys. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the wedding party. Once again, let me hear some noise. Now it's time to welcome in our guests of honor, the reason why we are all gathered here this evening. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, some of you are here as friends, some of you are here as family, and some of you are here as friends who are so close you probably refer to them as family. It might be the second time, but it's the first time in front of friends and family. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for the newly married Mr. and Mrs. Dorian. One more time, ladies and gentlemen.
and gentlemen, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. You are all here this evening with a little bit of magic in the form of a sound. So I want you to raise your glass, take a utensil, and I'd like you to clank that glass. And as is tradition, every time the newlyweds hear that noise, they are to share in a kiss. Ladies and gentlemen, the newlyweds. Okay, sing it out. Gentlemen, please put your hands together for the groom and his mom. I'll take the slow, sweet walk with you. You let go of my hand to say I. Life can be. I know 
ladies and gentlemen, the bride and her dad. So ladies and gentlemen, again, we have three best men and the father of the bride. And I'm going to ask the... So I'm going to ask the bride and groom to split up a little bit for just a minute. Dad's going to sit down. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to direct your attention to the sweetheart table as her father has a few words to share. I, I suppose you're all wondering why I gathered you here tonight? I, I'm being silly. I am the father of the bride. Uh, my name is Anthony. Most people call me Tony. Felicia calls me dad, at least to my face. Her husband, Drew, calls me T-Bone, to my face. <laughs> but it's okay, he's like a son to me. As a matter of fact, if Felicia as a child would have said to me, Dad, I want you to pick the man that I'm gonna marry, I would have chosen Drew. Years ago, uh, on some TV show, I saw a famous motivational speaker. So famous, I can't think of his name. <laughs> but he said, inside each and every one of us is a fool and a king. And whichever one you pay the most attention to is the one that everyone gets to know. Felicia only knew the king. I'll give you an example. As a young child, I mean, really little, she loved her bedtime story. And she had a collection of children's books. This, this one particular night, it was my turn to read to her. There was a Yankee game being televised in the other room. So I thought I could be a little quick about it, but. Now, these books were pretty big, and they had a lot of pictures in them in big, bold print. So you were done pretty fast, and maybe they were five or six pages long. So I, I start reading slowly, softly, and I glance over at her, and her eyes are starting to close. So I continue to read, and I glance again, and now the, her eyes are closed. And I thought, I'm going to make good time with this one. So... <laughs> Again, I'm continuing to read, and now her facial muscles are relaxed, and her breathing's deeper. So, there were two pages left. I decided to skip one of them. So I turned that page, and went right to the last page, and by the first sentence, her hand came up, smacked the book as if to tell me, <laughs> Go back to that page you skipped. As if she was telling me, how dare you be a fool enough to think that you could jip a king out of their bedtime story. Yeah. Needless to say, I never skipped a page again. Least she sent me to the gallows. This is a little tougher now. Years later, she was a sophomore in high school. She was on the track and field team and her passion was the hurdles. Her coach bumped her up to the varsity because she wanted her to experience running with the older girls so that when she got to be a senior, she would really be kick ass. This one particular night, she was having a track meet at, I think it was a college indoor field. And I got there, I got lost on the way, and just made it. And as the race started, within 10 seconds of the race, she grabbed her hip, pulled up, and limped off to the sideline. I initially thought that hamstring, a quad, something, something had happened. 
but she was in tears and an and obvious pain. The, uh, we made arrangements with the coach that uh, normally she would have to go back on the bus that took all the athletes there, but in this case, I, I could just drive her home. And, and I remember walking outside to the car and it, it seemed like an even darker than normal night. I mean, even the moon was tucked behind a cloud. Something was looming. It was pretty silent on the way home until I said something like, well, you know what, you know, you just rest, you heal up, and you'll be back at it. A day or two later, she went to see a doctor. After some tests and examination, I think an x-ray, he told her, it had something to do with her hip flexor, it hadn't fully matured, and she could never race again. She couldn't even compete in anything that involved racing or quick movement. Her career was over. Now, I mean, it hurt me. And I can only imagine what Felicia felt like. It was like a glass ceiling shattering on the floor and breaking into a thousand pieces. Every one of her dreams, hopes, and aspirations was in those pieces. She not even the king could help her now, but she turned to something even more powerful, her strength of character. She refocused, zeroed in on their academics, came up with new dreams, new passions. She moved on. I don't know if I could have, but she moved on. She taught me an invaluable lesson during that time, that life is a balancing act of hanging on and letting go. And she did it perfectly. So Felicia, I am privileged to be your father. I am so blessed. And no matter how many changes your birthdays ushered in, I still felt the same. I could do nothing but love you. So let's raise our glasses and toast a woman of compassion. I've heard that word used before. Dig <laughs> Dignity. I mean, the dictionary is full of words for her. A, a, a good, good woman. Smart, beautiful, all-inclusive, never excluding. Excellent. One final thing. All those adjectives I used to describe Felicia, Drew has the same attributes. Is it any wonder that these two are a perfect match? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear some noise for the bride's dad. All right, now we got the three amigos coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, we got the three best men. Let's hear it. Hello, everybody. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Michael Quist, and I have been uh, friend, best friends with Drew for going on 17 years at this point. So I'm just going to uh, share one quick story in our friendship of many stories, but... Um, one time in my basement, we were having this conversation. It was right around Drew's birthday. And uh, he said to me, hey, we're going to go out to this bar for my birthday. Should I invite this girl I've been seeing, who was Felicia? And um, 
I said to him, well, if you're asking me, it sounds like you shouldn't because you're probably not really into her. And he said, to, <laughs> and he said to me, no, man, actually quite the exact opposite. I'm very into her. So my response to him was, then of course you invite her, you idiot. So um, my, uh, out of all the conversations me and Drew have had in our years of friendships, who would have known calling him an idiot would have been the most important thing I've ever done. Thank you very much. Fever! All right, so Drew, Whew. I was uh, not lucky enough to take the school bus with you to Bergen Catholic, but I was very fortunate to have two great friends that did, and uh, they brought together this friendship that we now all have, which we're all very fortunate for. Whew. All right, Asbury, whoa. So uh, I said to Drew, we'll drive down together, no problem. And uh, he showed up in the hotel where I work, in the lobby, in his board shorts, flip-flops, and a beach chair. <laughs> Not the greatest thing you want to see. Um, but I said, all right, let's go. So we're on the way down, and uh, all we talk about is, you know, we're having a good time. You know, most of the same things when we all get together for a weekend. It's about a thousand beers and laughs, and uh, it's fun. So the last thing on the car that we would have thought is you would have walked away from that weekend with a uh, life partner and a beautiful wife. And that's what you did. It was incredible. <laughs> so, cheers to both of you. No, no, we're doing one big one, but cheers to both of you. A uh, lifetime of memories and a lot of great weekends just like that. Yeah. I love you both so much. All right, all right. All right, all right, all right. First of all, how stunning do the bride and groom look tonight? Beautiful. Uh, where do I begin? I, I've known Drew for over 15 years. Um, he's my best friend, and he's one of the wittiest guys I've ever known. He's like Larry David, if Larry David had full head of hair and became an electrician. <laughs> I, you know, I, I asked him once, I said, hey, Drew, uh, you want to come to the beach with me? And he said, you know what, Jay? I'd rather not drive two hours to just sit in a hot place and end up with sand in my ass. No, thank you. <laughs> said, okay. I mean, a simple no would have suffice, but all right, that's fine. Another, another time I asked him, hey, man, uh, what do you think about joining a gym with me? And he goes... Join in a gym. Voluntarily go to a place filled with douches and get sweaty for no reason? I'd rather go to the beach. <laughs> All right. But uh, all kidding aside, um, this is, this is what it's about. Drew, Fee, the love you guys have for each other is special. It's built on togetherness, understanding, and respect. <clears throat> this is the moment in time where maybe I should have used my phone at this point. <laughs> Where were we? Yeah. Tog togetherness, understanding, and respect. Those are the three things that are really how I look at it. 
Um, life has thrown a few curveballs at you guys. And as far as I see it, those curveballs aren't going to stop coming. But as long as you stay together, understand each other, and always have respect for one another, there's not a thing you won't be able to accomplish together. So if everyone would be so kind and joining me in saying to Drew and Fee, All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it one more time for our speeches. And I'm going to ask you if you have anything left in your glass to raise it one more time and taking a page out of Dad's book. Join me in wishing the newlyweds a fairy tale storybook filled with happiness, health, prosperity, and all the best wishes life can offer. And now I would like you to keep your attention there, and I'd like Cassie to go on up to the sweetheart table to share some remarks. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is our maid of honor. thank Drew's family for welcoming Fee into your home from day one, and I mean day one. Yeah. Next, I would like to thank my family for always being supportive of Fee and treating Drew like he was your own, one of your own. Sorry, Drew, not sure if this is something you were thrilled about. Celeste <laughs> loves to put you to work. <laughs> Last but not least, I would like to thank everyone in this room for celebrating a long overdue party of dancing and karaoke. Maria, we are anticipating you to start this. No pressure. Oh. And this is why I need to read off my paper, because I didn't even introduce myself. Fee, you wanted some Cassieisms, and you really got it. <laughs> my name is Cassie, and I am Fee's favorite sister. Growing up, I was not a sister a little girl would dream of. I was the complete opposite. From a young age, you always saw the good in me and never stopped loving me. You truly are one of a kind and have the most compassionate personality. Any Anyone who knows you is extremely blessed to have such a wonderful soul in their lives. When Fee was about four or five, my brother and I told her it was so weird she was showering naked. So naturally, she wanted to believe her older siblings and decided to wear a bathing suit in the shower. <laughs> Till this day, we don't know how long that lasted for, but one day my parents saw her get in the shower with her bathing suit on and had to explain to her that wasn't the way you clean yourself. Not sure why no one ever told her she smelled, but I'm sure I probably did since I wasn't very pleasant. <laughs> Anyone who knows Fee knows she will go out of her way for you without you telling her what to do and never ask for anything in return. Quick story. A few years ago, Fee and Drew drove four hours to surprise me and Kevin on our anniversary. They knew we had no one to watch the kids and des decided to surprise us so we could be alone for a few hours. This is an example of how selfless and generous she is. Another thing I did was I always told her all the time she was adopted and I wouldn't stop. She would ask my family if that was true, and of course, Papa told you we found you in a cabbage patch farm. <laughs> Papa's quirky sense of humor always made you laugh, and of course, that's why you're his favorite. My father reaffirmed Fee that he was half Italian, half Irish, and she wasn't adopted. Fast forward 20 years, and she takes a DNA test. Well, to her surprise, and all of us, she had no Italian in her. So maybe... All along, I was right, but that's a question for my mom down the road. <laughs> Fee, thank you for always being my role model, my best friend, my mentor, and most of all, the one who will always give me the advice I need to hear, even if I don't want to hear it. You never sugarcoat anything and always know how to make me feel better. I truly am the luckiest girl in the world to have you by my side. Oh, girls, let's not forget, she'll always be your Auntie P. Do, where do I start with you? Will you... Well, to begin, you may walk into a room and break something immediately and not pay attention to the people around you in a store, Kevin and Fee's pet peeve of ours, but those negatives outweigh the man you are. When Fee first met you, she told us you were afraid of kids. From day one, you proved that statement wrong. 
When my son was born, Drew and Fee took a week off of their own vacation time to come and stay at my house and help me with my kids. Three kids in three and a half years was something I wasn't prepared for, to top it off with a husband who started a new job so he didn't have much vacation time to help. They both knew I was struggling, so they came to help. Drew had a way with Cole from day one. When Cole would cry, Drew would walk around my downstairs with a screaming baby and wouldn't stop walking until he got Cole to fall asleep and then kept him in his arms. Probably 90% of these people in this room would never think to do that if it wasn't your own child. Drew, you didn't hes hesitate to not help me. Thank you. Another story of how Drew puts others before him was in the same week I decided to make homemade pizza. Well, <laughs> I dropped that pizza in the oven when I was trying to get it face down. Of course, the alarms went off and smoke took over my house. Drew and, Fee gra Drew and Fee grabbed the kids and out the door we went. Once we were all outside, Drew insisted on going back into my house to open all the windows and get the smoke out before my kids inhaled it, on top of cleaning out my stove. Fee and Drew, you both are the most thoughtful individuals, and together you make a perfect couple. I can't wait to see what the future holds for you guys. And always remember, I will be by your side all the time, exactly like you both are there for my family. Can we toast to a lifetime of happiness and taking one day at a time? Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear from Maid of Honor. Thank you.
wanna be my lover You gotta get with my friends Make it last forever Friendship never ends If you wanna be my lover You have got to give You've got to take it It's too easy But that's the way it is So here's a story from A to Z You wanna get with me You gotta listen carefully We got M in the place Who likes it in your face You got G like MC You likes it on a easy beat Do it.